All right, ready to dive in. Today, we're checking out something pretty amazing, the U.S. Navy's hospital ships. And just to be clear, we're not talking about your average medical boats here. Picture a vessel out on the open ocean, outfitted like a major hospital you'd find in a big city. They're really something else. I mean, we're talking 1,000 beds, 12 operating rooms, even dental clinics. It's all self-contained, ready to go wherever needed in the world. What's really interesting is how these floating cities of care, as they're sometimes called, haven't always been focused on humanitarian aid. Initially, their main purpose was to support the Navy in wartime. Makes sense. Treating wounded soldiers at sea, right? Exactly. So how did we go from battlefield medicine to these global humanitarian efforts? Seems like a huge leap. It was a gradual shift, for sure. But the Gulf War in 1990, that was a real turning point. How so? Well, deploying the USNS Comfort during that conflict really changed things. It showed everyone that these ships could handle multinational operations. They could provide aid even in really delicate political situations. So, before the Gulf War, most people probably pictured them mostly helping out our troops. But that really broadened their image, didn't it? It's pretty amazing to think they can navigate not just like literally sailing into a crisis zone, but also navigating all the politics of providing international aid. Absolutely. The Gulf War really proved they could work beyond political boundaries. They became a symbol of peacetime humanitarian aid that really solidified their role in the world stage today. You mentioned these ships are essentially self-sustaining, like their own little ecosystems. What does that actually look like, practically speaking? I can't even imagine the logistics of running a regular hospital, let alone one on a ship, in the middle of the ocean. It's mind-blowing when you think about it. Beyond just medical equipment, you've got to have huge amounts of fresh water, enough food for hundreds of crew members, yeah. and then there's handling waste disposal all while sailing. It takes an unbelievable amount of planning and coordination. And the crew. You've got to have a really unique set of skills to serve on one of these ships. It's not just doctors and nurses, right? Not at all. You've got your medical teams, of course, the doctors, nurses, surgeons, all kinds of specialists. But then you've also got the Navy personnel running the ship itself. Plus the engineers, the cooks, the logistics experts. It's a whole floating city. Wow. And, you know, for a lot of those crew members, it's not just a job. It's a real commitment. They're away from their families, sometimes for months at a time. They face some really tough situations, yet their dedication never falters. That's really something. So they're ready for pretty much any medical situation. They're self-sustaining, and they've got this incredibly dedicated crew. What kind of medical situations are we talking about, though? Being in the middle of the ocean, miles from a hospital, they must be ready for anything. Once everything starts going, you just throw yourself into the chaos, and it's a great time. Comfex is an abbreviation for comfort exercise. It's a quarterly exercise uh, where we bring our critical core on board to, to train and, more importantly, develop our readiness. I love the adrenaline rush of being thrown into a situation with a lot of things going on and the trauma is super fun. You learn so much and the doctors and nurses are absolutely fabulous. What the critical core is, is it's a, it's a group of people, uh, 300 folks, that are actually at the naval hospitals and other commands. There's actually 11 other uh, support, supporting commands that we pull these people from that come in quarterly. Uh, they come to the comfort, they spend a week with us d doing uh, readiness drills, some training, um, it's equipment checks. Uh, it's, it's a multifaceted type uh, exercise. Uh, they're a good teaching tool for us as nurses and the corpsmen uh, moving forward in our careers. Coming onto the comfort and having these situations is just a step forward. The capabilities that we do have, even though this was a training scenario, um, it really highlighted how capable we are. The comfort is simply the, the, the largest roll three medical treatment facility afloat. At the end of that uh, one week, we have a group of people that understand the comfort, they understand the comfort, how the comfort operates, and uh, they are prepared then when they do get the call, they can be on board in 24 hours and uh, 
prepare to cast off lines no no more than five days you would be amazed yeah it's not just you know setting a broken bone or treating the flu we're talking advanced equipment stuff you wouldn't find in some land-based hospitals really like what well they've got sophisticated imaging technology ct scanners digital x-ray machines and it's all designed to function perfectly even with the ship moving on the water they've got operating rooms equipped for everything everything pretty much oh. orthopedic surgeries neurosurgery even open heart surgery and they're prepared for diving accidents too with hyperbaric chambers for treating the bends you're kidding that's incredible i had no idea with that level of preparedness and all the logistics involved these ships are more than just medical marvels it's a feat of engineering logistics human dedication everything exactly and that's what makes them so impressive it's this fusion of high technology human ingenuity and a deep commitment to helping others. And the impact goes way beyond just the immediate medical care they provide, especially when they show up after a disaster. Let's talk about that impact because we've got some amazing stories about their missions. These ships, they really have a way of turning up in the toughest situations. They do. Like take the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. Oh, just awful. The devastation was unbelievable. I remember those news reports, whole neighborhoods wiped out, hospitals overflowing. It was a nightmare. And right in the middle of that chaos, the USNS Comfort arrives. Just a beacon of hope for people who had lost everything. They got there so fast, didn't they? Within days, they were providing emergency surgeries, even delivering babies. It's amazing how many lives they were able to impact in such a short time. There was one survivor who said, I lost everything, but when I saw the Comfort, I knew help was finally here. The doctors and nurses, they treated me like family. They saved my life. Wow. It just shows you, it goes beyond medical care. There's a real human connection there. Absolutely. And speaking of human connection, the USNS Mercy's response to the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, that's another powerful example. Oh, absolutely. That was one of the worst natural disasters ever recorded. It's unimaginable the scale of it. Devastation on a massive scale. And there was the Mercy treating thousands, helping put communities back together. And again, they brought more than just medicine. They brought hope to people who've lost everything. It's true. One resident even said, the Mercy brought medical aid, sure, but they also brought back a sense of hope that we thought was lost forever. Mm -hmm. Their compassion was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Those words really show the deeper effect these missions have. It goes way beyond just treating injuries. It's like they bring a feeling of normalcy, of hope, to situations that seem completely hopeless. Exactly. And it's not always about responding to disasters, is it? They also have a role in building relationships between countries. That's right, they do. Like the Pacific Partnership mission in 2013 when the USNS Mercy visited places like the Philippines and Vietnam. A perfect example. That's a fascinating program. It's yeah. not just reacting to crises, but actively building ties with other nations. Exactly. And these hospital ships are the perfect way to do that. They are. They provide essential medical care, but they also focus on training local medical professionals. Right. Sharing knowledge and helping strengthen those local healthcare systems. Like a floating embassy of goodwill, using medicine to bridge cultures. Exactly, and it's so effective. It really is. Dr. Emily, a physician who was on the mercy for that mission, talked about working together, saying it was amazing to see how much of a difference we could make so quickly, not just by treating people, but by giving local medical teams the skills they needed. It was a real partnership. That spirit of working together, it's so important. And it shows how these missions are about so much more than just delivering aid. It's about collaborating with communities, building trust, and creating change that lasts. Absolutely. Makes you wonder what it's like for the crew on board every day. Serving on a hospital ship has to be a one-of-a-kind experience. I mean, you have Navy personnel and civilian doctors, nurses, all kinds of specialists all living and working together practically on top of each other, often thousands of miles from home? It's intense, that's for sure. Imagine being on call 247, never knowing what's coming next. One minute you're doing a routine checkup, the next you're part of a team handling a medical evacuation in the middle of the ocean. I bet there are some wild stories, bursts on board, emergency surgeries and rough seas. You have no idea. Babies seem to love making their entrances out on the open ocean. It can get pretty exciting, but the crew takes it all in stride. They're like a family supporting the mother and baby through those crucial first moments. And yeah, emergency surgeries, those are surprisingly common, appendicitis, things like that, even more complicated cases. Wow, I can only imagine. It takes real skill, real composure to perform delicate procedures with the ship moving beneath you. Talk about high pressure, I can't even imagine. It must take a toll on the crew, 
physically and emotionally, what's that like for them? It's not easy, that's for sure. Lieutenant Sarah, a Navy nurse who served on the USNS Comfort, she described it like being on an emotional roller coaster. She'd go from checking on patients in the ICU to assisting in a complicated surgery. And then later that same day, she might be comforting a child who was separated from their family during a disaster. That sounds incredibly demanding, both physically and mentally. It is. But Lieutenant Sarah also said, there are days you're completely exhausted, but then you see a patient smile or just hear a simple thank you and it makes it all worth it. Those moments of human connection, realizing you've made a real difference in someone's life, that's what makes it all worthwhile, I imagine. Absolutely, and it's not just the medical staff either. You know? Right, it takes a village. Exactly, Yeah. every single person on that ship plays a part. The unsung heroes behind the scenes, right? Exactly. The ones making sure everything runs smoothly, the logistics folks, the engineers, even the cooks. All of them, like you said, are real team effort Take Petty Officer James, for example. He's a logistics specialist who was on the USNS Mercy during the Pacific Partnership mission. He talked about the pressure of making sure every single medical supply was accounted for and delivered, often in really difficult conditions, like remote islands. I can't even imagine the whole other level of logistics. He said, we had to be perfect. People's lives depended on it. It was stressful, but knowing our work directly helped save lives, that made it all worthwhile. That's amazing. That's the kind of dedication that often goes unseen, but it's crucial to the success of these missions. Every single role, from the surgeons to the supply officers, comes together to achieve something much bigger than any one person. Couldn't have said it better myself. And speaking of something bigger, we haven't even touched on the impact these ships have on global diplomacy. That's right. Beyond just the medical aid, they're powerful symbols of diplomacy. Building bridges between countries, showing goodwill, and a real commitment to global health. Like the 2018 Pacific Partnership mission we talked about earlier. Exactly. The USNS Mercy being in Southeast Asia that year, it wasn't just about healthcare. It strengthened ties between the US and those countries. It showed that the US is invested in the health and well-being of people all over the world. And that sends a powerful message. It's incredible, isn't it? They have both hard power and soft power. They deliver actual, tangible aid, but they're also nurturing these vital diplomatic relationships at the same time. It really speaks to the complexity of what they do. They represent the best of humanity, reaching across borders, reaching across cultures, to lend a hand. And that's something that resonates with people everywhere. Absolutely. And the numbers speak for themselves. Since they were first commissioned, these ships have treated hundreds of thousands of patients, performed over 1,500 surgeries. They provide everything from critical care to mental health support. Dr. Michael, a lead physician on the USNS Comfort, summed it up perfectly, saying, these ships are more than just medical facilities. They are symbols of hope, symbols of resilience. Mm. Our work here isn't just about treating injuries, it's about rebuilding lives and restoring people's faith in humanity. That's a powerful way to put it. These floating hospitals, they're not just patching people up, they're offering a lifeline, a sign that someone cares, that there's hope, even when things seem bleakest. They truly embody that spirit of compassion and resilience, crossing borders, reminding us of our shared humanity. Well said. This deep dive has really opened my eyes to the profound impact of these floating cities of care. It really makes you wonder what other amazing innovations are out there just waiting to be discovered. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and as always, keep diving deep. I want the wind to carry me far away from here and I I fly, I'll take with me Moments left behind I want the same